Hello, and welcome to this week's Music Musings. So I'm just going to fire right into this time with a question for you guys. So how thick is your pick? Um, I, I, I've got quite a few preconceived notions about how the thickness or width of a plectrum um, affects the sound of the guitar. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. It's not, I mean, it's not exact uh, because it, it never can be. But what I'm going to do is uh, this lovely little fetching pink <laughs> pink sticker here. I'm going to kind of try and play in this area. Of, oh, sorry, I'm going to try and play in this area of the guitar because um, obviously if you play here and then play here, it's going to have a huge, huge difference in tone. So I'll play around here, uh, changing the plectrum, changing the thickness of plectrum, and I will see if my my bias as to what I think will happen is confirmed or not. So the way I want to do this is uh, give you guys the option to do it as a blind test if you want to try and test your ears or whatever. So what I'm going to do now is bring up all the picks I'm going to use. So if you don't want to see them, we want to try and guess through pure uh, guitar intuition, uh, turn away now. Okay, that's probably probably been up long enough now. Uh, I, I mean, obviously when I'm playing, if you watch it, there's a good chance you'll be able to work out what the plectrum is. So again, it's up to you whether you want to watch the video or, you know, kind of minimize the screen and just listen to it and kind of test your ears. Um, I'm more, I'm quite interested to see what will happen, but I, I do have a, I do have an, an idea of what, what, will, what the sounds will be in, in general, but it'll be interesting to see if it turns out that way or not. So it's up to you how much you want to test yourself, if you just want to watch through it, or if you want to try and, you know, kind of guess the plectrum or whatever. Cool. So I'm just going to fire into that right now. Firstly, what I'm going to do is play a picking part down here, uh, then I'll strum it a bit harder, do some chords, do a little bit of improvising up at the top, playing it hard to start off with, and then lowering the dynamic as I go.
So I'm keeping the exact same setting except I'm going to play on the neck pickup and attempt some slightly faster runs. The gain's quite low so I do apologise if some of them are a little bit sloppy. <laughs> So I, I don't know about you, but to me there's certainly a difference between some of the plectrums. So for example, the um, ridiculously thin uh, green shark's fin, oh sorry, it's out of focus there. Uh, that one, really, really thin. It did sound a lot tinnier to me than, for example, uh, maybe not necessarily a big stubby, the, the John uh, Petrucci special. Big stubby, again, it sounds quite smooth, but you do get a bit of a, a different pick attack from it. There is a slight kind of like, or like, <laughs> sound as it hits the strings, which is, you know, it's just a, a preference thing. You do, I, I notice this most when I'm recording, what I will sometimes do if I'm playing the same part twice, double tracking or something, particularly if it's a big strummy thing, I might do one with a thicker plectrum, like one of the, um, you know, the one and a half, or like one, 1.10 millimeters and then do another one with like a thin uh, shark's fin plectrum because you'd get a little bit more high end so for example if you're doing uh, chords on an acoustic it's probably going to sound a lot nicer with a thinner plectrum because you'll get less of that kind of crunk as the pick hits against the strings and um, if you're doing jazz or something like that a thicker plectrum like a big stubby or you know even even like a jazz jazz one is going to sound more rounded than uh, just go back to the shark's fin for that as an example. So that's what that's what my ears tell me anyway. Um, it might just be my uh, my bias, or it might be because I can hear the actual uh, plectrum hitting the string in the room rather than just the sound from the kind of the gain channel. So that might that might affect things a little bit as well. So let me know what you think in the comments about uh, how thick is your pick and let me know what picks you guys use and if there's any you'd recommend. Oh, on that topic, I do really like the uh, like Dunlop Jazz ones, Jazz 3s, but they're actually slightly different. Um, I'll do a, do a close-up of that so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. I think I had to buy a packet of those, um, I think it was like 72 of them from um, Thumbman, so I'll, I'll put a link in the description because that's a really good site for buying music stuff if you're in Europe anyway I'm not too sure what it's like in America I think you guys might have slightly better options cool and the other thing is if you don't use a plectrum at all you might use uh, your fingers I do from time to time it does sound cool it sounds, it sounds sort of nicer in a way or at least uh, that's what Jeff Beck would say and he's, he's you know <laughs> he's a pretty good guy to go by if Jeff Beck says something probably probably quite a lot of weight to it so there's a thing I discovered uh, from a camera what I was watching, I don't know if it was a YouTube video or it might have even been that um, Guitar Star series that was on uh, Sky Arts and it's to do with um, rolling, a like, kind of classical technique where you roll, uh, you do a chord, which I don't use that often but sometimes you know you're playing with your fingers rather than a pick, sounds quite nice to do. So I'll do a quick little video on the technique for that. So if you normally roll like this. Uh, you can make life a lot easier if you just arch your arm a bit like this. The fingers roll much more naturally. So it's a bit like your arm being in a resting position. And just going from this to this makes a huge difference. Cool, so that made a huge difference uh, to me. Just like it's something as stu stupidly simple as like doing that makes it easier for your fingers to kind of do that, you know, kind of movement. Um, it's amazing though, you can play for years and there'll be these little tiny things that you never really uh, pick up on yourself and then someone points them out to you or 
you discover an easier way of doing something. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> how has this been? I've been struggling. I've been struggling with my own method. So on that uh, kind of wave of picking things up, what I'd really recommend as a guitar player, if you're kind of in to the discipline and want to like learn more and that kind of thing, is just checking out uh, Guthrie Govan YouTube videos. Like you can't, you really, <laughs> you really can't go wrong from uh, watching the guy. Uh, he just uses so many little techniques and stuff. Like uh, when he's bending strings, he'll be resting his fingers on you know these fingers on. So say he bends the G string, he'll probably rest his uh, you know middle and third finger on the B and E strings to stop them from ringing out. And it's all these little things that you wouldn't necessarily think of and he, I think he does most of them intuitively because he's just played for so long. Um, so I'll put up a few uh, videos, I'll put the links down of some of the things that I think are really cool. Like there's one I saw recently where he makes his guitar sound like a, like an oud or something for just like it's three seconds but it's just, it's just genius, musical genius. The band I'm going to suggest this week is quite quite an old one and I don't, I don't know if they're still going anymore. But it's a band called uh, Danger Danger, and uh, the guitarist Andy Timmons. If you've ever, if you've not checked him out as well, he's fantastic. I'd highly recommend. He's got um, there's a live show where he just runs through his uh, Resolution album, and that's like he doesn't hit a wrong note, and it's spectacular playing. Um, but yeah, he was in this '80s band called Danger Danger, and if you know Andy Timmons, you know he's kind of like a power blues player. It's quite fun to see him in this, like. Uh, kind of 80s kind of you know spandex rock thing and he's just like the solos in those albums are just fantastic there's um i think there might be a live one kicking about on youtube so i'd check that out danger danger featuring andy timmons really good guitar fun and through the magic of video editing i've acquired a guitar so uh, this is the bit about kind of gear and stuff so something you may or may not know it's a cool thing you can do with uh, Telecasters in particular, or guitars that, like, if you've got a, a lock and trim, it's not going to work. The guitar is where the strings are exposed. If it's plugged into an amp, not got it plugged in just now, but you hit here, behind the nut, and with Telecasters, I don't know if this is universal, but I think it is. It's definitely the case with this one. The note sounds more or less like a D, so there's certain keys where it actually can be quite musical. So say you've got like a It's, you know, it's a, still a bit dissonant, but it's more or less in that key. So that's a little thing if you're playing in D and you want to produce a bit of feedback or a kind of gnarly kind of noise behind the nut, that's the way to do it. There's a thing I found on YouTube, a uh, bit of gear that is, it's called a Jimmy Clip. And the idea is that it goes over here and stops. You sometimes get a chirp uh, from the strings here if you're playing, particularly if you're playing with like kind of high gain and stuff. Um, I'm not too sure if it doubles up as a pick holder or not, I might be thinking of something else there. But what I saw that in was um, CS Guitars, which is a YouTube channel that is the one I'm going to recommend uh, checking out for this video. It's a guy, uh, Colin I'm pretty sure is his name. He does just all sorts of like uh, modifications and you know kind of like get to know your guitar and get to know your gear stuff. Um, and with you know a good uh, good kind of sense of humor as well. It's not too doesn't take himself too seriously, which is always nice to see. Yep. So I'd recommend that's the YouTube channel that I'd recommend checking out this week. Great. So please let me know your thoughts on uh, pick thickness in particular in the comments below, and see if we can uh, see if we can crack the pick enigma uh, once and for all. Right. Cheers.